All right, so welcome back to our, our next edition of a, a topic and a cup of coffee with your Arrow team. Uh, my name is Chris Wright, and today I'm joined uh, by Jim Trainer. Jim, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, Jim Trainer. I'm the DSM for Western United States. Excellent. Jim and I both have our cups of coffee right here. I invite you to brew a cup of coffee yourself, and we're going to spend a few minutes today talking about the basics of pump selection. Uh, and Jim's going to walk us through a scenario where, you know, maybe you're new to the pump industry. Uh, you know, you get that phone call, you're a brand new inside salesperson, no one's available to help, everyone's on the phone, and you really want to be able to help the customer. Um, there's some great tools available through Arrow and just, you know, some, some simple starter processes that, that Jim's going to talk us through. So, Jim, why don't we start there? You get that phone call, someone's looking for help to choose the right pump. Where, where do you start? Okay, so the first place you go is to aerozone.com. So once you get to aerozone.com, we have some tools to help you for many things, but today we're going over the diaphragm pump selector tool. So under tools, make that selection. So you, you will have to uh, set up a, a login to get going. Once you do that, you go ahead and log in, brings you to the start pump selection page. And here's where you input the information that you get from the actual uh, distributor sales guy or customer, whoever is trying to have you select the pump. There's a, a few pieces of information you're going to need. Um, basically, flow, pressure, flow rate, the head pressure of their system. And I, I have another help screen to, to find out what that could be on your own. They don't, customers don't always provide that, to be honest. Uh, and the chemical that they're pumping are, are the minimum three. Flow rate, pressure, and product. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, a standard application that we run into all the time. It's uh, sodium hydroxide or caustic soda. So the example I have worked up, we're going to put in the flow rate, 90 gallons a minute. And so really all you're doing is filling out these menus and then you're gonna hit search and it'll, it'll spit out some models. Um, total head in the system, think of back pressure, pumping through pipings and valves and, and the system. Key, uh, key tab here is the, the measurement of the head. It defaults to feet of, uh, feet, feet of water which in our industry, we, we talk PSI. So you wanna make sure you change that to PSI. So our customer's conditions are 90 gallons a minute, 30 PSI head pressure, and I chose sodium hydroxide, like I said, a custom, well, a standard product we pump all day long. So sodium hydroxide has a different, uh, a few different percentages. I'm going with a pretty standard one, which is 20% and just cold. There's no, no heat involved. The good thing about this, uh, one of the good things about this selector is not only does it help you size the pump, it also provides the chemical resistance guide in the same location. And we, we do have one available on our site that you can download and you can use also, but you already have one in, in this application. So sodium hydroxide, you can see the different materials that are getting A ratings, both with the wetted parts and the elastomers. It's pretty standard that polypropylene with santaprene are what is being used out in the industry. Uh, you could go through every one of those when you're selecting a pump and narrow it down. It does ask for a viscosity. Uh, it happens to be 10 and centipoise is what, what it is for this product. Uh, you can take a educated guess on this. You can ask the customer for it. Again, they don't always provide it, but you can Google it. You can look at an MSDS and you can, you can find that. Or you even ask the customer, is it water-like, milk-like, milkshake-like? You can kind of come up with a, an estimate. And essentially, you've chosen your flow conditions, your product, and what material pump you're going to look for once you size it back on our, our configurator and come up with a model. 
And then the last thing to do is pick what style of pump you want to consider. Compact, expert, FDA, and so on. Uh, we're gonna go with an expert series pump today and also a pro series. Uh, these are one inch through three inch because the flow rate is much greater than what a compact pump could do. So if you select the expert, then you can hit control and select the any additional ones. Really, once you have all that done, the next thing to do is just hit the search button. Once you do that, it will provide you with the models that can pump at those conditions. So the smallest one that comes up is an inch and a half pump, but all the way up to three. An inch and a half pump will get it done, but so will a two inch and a three inch. So you have some decisions to make there, and it can be based on pricing of the overall unit or the compressed air requirements. As you can see here on the highlighted pump, this is a three inch pump. It only needs 63 PSI and uses 55 CFM. That pump is considerably more expensive than an inch and a half pump, but the inch and a half pump is gonna run quite a bit faster. These two versions here need more pressure and considerably more CFM. So that can help you decide for the customer, well, the more expensive pump, yes, it, it's gonna run slower and use less air, might be the better choice than a smaller pump running really fast and wearing out all its components and potentially needing a bigger compressor. So that makes it pretty simple to get to the size and style of your pump. Kim Guide's already there. This tells you what sizes so you'd have to go back to the calculator or a price sheet to figure out which ones you want to quote for your customer. But another feature of this program is you can, you can select the type or the model or this preview by just clicking on that, and it gives you some more detailed information. Uh, flow curve, so you can have a printed flow curve to send to an engineer or someone designing a system. Uh, there's also printed reports that include the pump curve in a data sheet. So you can see this chart at the bottom will, will show you the air pressure that you need along with the air uh, requirements and volume, CFM. But for some reason, or if for some reason, a customer cannot provide 80 because their system always has, let's say, 100 PSI and they cannot reduce it, you can make the change and redraw the curve and it will show you the change in air consumption or, or air required. So today, or right now, we were at 80 and 70.5 CFM. When I change it to 100, it goes up to 90 CFM. So you can explain to them also that, that by not reducing down the air to 80, that extra 20 PSI that you're providing the pump is burning up more air consumption at the end of the day. Uh, that's a way to show them. Great, so, so Jim, that worked really well when you had all of that information right at the beginning. But you mentioned that sometimes, you know, the customer that's calling in may not have that, or, you know, maybe it's someone that's newer to the industry and doesn't, you know, have sort of default numbers in their head. What types of tools are available for someone that maybe has a customer that can't provide all that information right at the beginning? Wow, perfect, glad you asked that. So in a case where a customer knows what flow they want, but they do not know the head pressure of their system. They're gonna ask you to figure that out for them, and there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, basically, you have to look at their system, their piping, their valves, and everything they want to pump through and provide a number as if you had a gauge sitting there. Um, so you're, you're doing that work for them, and, and that's most of the time what they expect. So they, they come to us to size the pump based on what they're trying to do. So if we go back to that same scenario, 90 gallons a minute is what we, we used, um, and we had 30 PSI given to us. So another way to find that, that number, that head pressure for the system, is to go, there's books and charts you can calculate it with, but I found a, a website that, that I use, and it's called, uh, I'll click on it, it's called Free Calc. F-R-E-E-C-A-L-C.com. 
So it's an engineering website that you can go to that will, you can plug in their information of their piping system and it will spit out the head, head pressure in their system. So once you get to the free calc site, you can click on pumps and that will take you to pump applications. And then from that page, you go to online pump system design. It'll bring you to this uh, screen, which you can you know plug in all kinds of information on this one. It's a little more detailed if you're doing a whole entire system. What I typically use is the calculating actual piping line loss. So I go ahead and click on this one, and it's a little more basic. So today, for our application, we're gonna we have a two inch pump in mind based on the 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 selection we did earlier. Uh, so we're gonna try with just two inch piping, see what that does for um, a, a system head pressure. I'm gonna use schedule 80 PVC. So I'm just going down these pull down menus and making selections now and you hit calculate pressure drop. And you can see it'll spit out the number for us right here, 30.02 PSI. So that's that's what we expect to overcome based on the system design from the customer, what he tells you, or what you go see and you know, measure and, and take pictures of yourself. You can come up with that number. And where, where I find it, it's very good for what we just did. But even, even better when a guy, a customer doesn't have, doesn't know what size pipe they want to use yet. So he goes, I would really like to use, oh, half inch pipe for this application. Everything else is the same. 210 feet, all these different elbows. And he says, I want, to, I want 90 gallons a minute, I'm gonna use a two inch pump. Okay, let's try it. You put that in there and you see you're up to 12,000 PSI of head pressure because of your piping and the friction loss. So essentially you can help them design, design a system by making just piping changes you switch to inch and a half, it's still 100 PSI, which is not manageable for our, our standard diaphragm pumps. It's very helpful, and I would say a lot of actual end users aren't aware that just making a small pipe change will, uh, will drastically affect the heads, head pressure in their system. So do you so have... Very, do you have like a rule of thumb or a guide of what type of range you're trying to get that between for a diaphragm pump application? Yes, yes, good question. So uh, our, our pumps run at a max of 120 PSI. So it would, and we have system losses through that. So if you put 120 PSI to a pump, you're going to assume about 10 to 20 PSI would be, 20 would be safe for your below your max air inlet pressure. So if your pump can handle 120 going in, the head and the system should be 100 or less, or the pump will equalize and stop running. The lowest pressure our pumps start at would be 20 PSI to get them moving. So your head in your system can be anywhere from zero to 100 on a standard diaphragm pump. Great. And that pretty much would, would take care of uh, finding your application condition, and then you would input that information back on the selector. So if we went with a different flow rate, different PSI, or different configuration that we came up with, and that changed to what the customer told you, or you had to do it yourself, let's say it went to 60 PSI after we added the 20 ball valves he forgot to tell us about, so we could then plug this in here and re redo our search and see what comes up. At that point, your, your limited options, you're, you're down to just a three inch pump. So this time you only have two pump options, but last time you ran the calculation, you, you know, you had some pump options as small as one and a half inch all the way up to three inch. Are there certain questions you would ask or things you would go back to the end user to really understand what the best option is for their application? In the previous, uh, previous model, yes. Uh, depending on what 
they wanted to spend up front versus use long term is was really the best uh, conversation to have with them moving forward. The, the cost of a inch and a half pump, like I said, was going to be let's substantially less than a three inch. So that becomes overall cost of ownership, the price of the pump, the air used over a year's time, the cost of the kits. So that's a different uh, different calculation you could do. And we have a cost calculator where we could, we could uh, plug that information into and it would actually tell you how much one of the three inch pumps costs in a year's time versus an inch and a half. And the customer, depending on their their buying capabilities, some some customers you know have a limit that they can buy for capital equipment, no matter what. So they, they'll use the smaller pump, even though the larger one might be a better choice. So it kind of depends on each customer and their buying habits. But that that would be the conversation. So it looks like you said there's lots of tools available, and even if you're not as comfortable or you're newer to the industry, you know, with just a few pieces of information, you can still be really helpful, you know, to a customer sizing a pump. So maybe Jim, just as a reminder, you know, if you get that phone call, someone's looking for help, what are the most critical things that someone needs to know to really dive into this process of sizing a pump correctly? Oh, great question. So, you know, at, at a minimum, if someone's calling and saying, I need a pump to do this, you know, you, they have to tell you for sure what they're pumping and the flow at a minimum, and then either explain the system to you so you can provide the head, or if they know what it is already, you can just go ahead and start right here at the, the calculator. And then because of the tools it has included, you'll get your chemical resistance guide right here. The next page will give you the size of the pump and then you can go back to your price sheets or the, uh, you know, the configurator and see the different models, the different prices, and then decide which one you want to propose. If it could be all three or, or you can help them, you know, point them to which one is most uh, cost effective for the initial price and, you know, cost of ownership, but it can all, you know, it all starts at aerozone.com. Well, that's great, Jim. Looks like there's some great tools, you know, both available through AeroZone and, and from your team at Aero, as well as some tools that, you know, are available to everybody online. So really appreciate you taking the time today to walk us through the pump selection process. I hope you enjoyed your cup of coffee. I enjoyed mine and hopefully you guys learned something about pump selection. So thanks a lot, Jim. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Welcome. Cheers.